you're here more than once or twice at these evenings, you'll probably hear the same prayer. It's kind of uh, my all-purpose. Uh, if you know the French Jesuit Teilhard de Chardin, you'll recognize this prayer. Um, again, it's, it's one of those prayers about becoming, about patience. In fact, the name of the prayer is Patient Trust. So a few deep breaths, and here we go. The prayer is Patient Trust. Above all, trust in the slow work of God. We are quite naturally impatient in everything to reach the end without delay. We should like to skip the intermediate stages. We are impatient of being on the way to something unknown, something new. And yet it is the law of all progress, that it is made by passing through some stages of instability, and that may take a very long time. And so I think it is with you. Your ideas mature gradually, let them grow. Let them shape themselves without undue haste. Give our Lord the benefit of believing that his hand is leading you and accept the anxiety of feeling yourself in suspense and incomplete. And with that, we say amen. So I don't know what you, you, you think or what strikes you when you hear that prayer, but I, you know what? I've read it many times, and every time it means something a little bit new. So I want to start uh, with a few thoughts, but first I want to introduce Mr. D for a few words, okay? And then we'll start with a few thoughts and move into our PowerPoint. Mr. Kimball? Thanks, Sean. Welcome, everybody. So for those of you, um, the last time you were here may have been the, the first night, the, the freshman parent orientation. Um, it's a little cooler, as you notice. Um, so it's, it's uh, welcome back. Um, I just want to thank you all for, for being here tonight and thank you all for, for your trust in us uh, as your sons navigate this first year at Fairville Prep. For some of you, this is your first son here at Prep. For others, you're, you are veterans of this. But uh, every student's experience is always different. So we want to thank you, thank you all very much for your trust in us, the trust that you place in us every day, uh, and the trust that you will place in us over the next four years as we work with you to develop your sons uh, into young men who achieve this mission that we have on our wall here, who achieve those five characteristics of our graduate at graduation. You're coming into to prep at a really an exciting time, and, and Mr. Henry will talk a little bit about kind of the new setup of our school and college counseling department and how we've really kind of increased our capacity, and, and your son will have two counselors throughout his time here at Fairville Prep, which is a great addition. So we're really excited about that. One of the, the best days that we've had so far this year uh, was, was last Wednesday. So Wednesday, October 11th, we had um, a, our, 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 the first part of our freshman retreat. And the first part of that day was our freshmen, our ninth graders, our, our youngest guys here, uh, were truly mentors for some elementary school students. And it was just a tremendous opportunity to see them really grow uh, within that day and really rise to the occasion and provide a tremendous day for, uh, for our youngest, uh, youngest members of our, of our extended community. Um, they were awesome. They had a lot of fun. I hope they came home and, and told you about the day. Uh, but it was really just tremendous to see the growth that they showed uh, and how they rose to the occasion on that day. Uh, so it's, just, it's one of my favorite days. It always is. But, but this, uh, this class of 2027 did a tremendous job this year. As we continue throughout this, this year and over the next couple of years, I certainly encourage you to continue to communicate. Communicate with your teachers, communicate uh, with your son's counselors, his coaches, his advisors, all the areas of support that we have here on campus. Your teachers have known your son for, for 30 school days, and they're doing a great job of getting to know them, but you've known them for, for 14 years, right? So the more that you can um, provide, more information that you can provide our, our faculty, your son's teachers, and work together with them to make sure that your sons are having the best experience here possible, the better. So thank you all very much. Thanks so much for being here, and we look forward to seeing you all very soon. I'm going to pass it back to Mr. Hanrahan. <laughs> you better not know my code. I don't mean that in a bad way, Mr. Hanrahan. Um, I want to start with just a, a little bit of a context setting, um, just to kind of give you a, some opening thoughts about our program. And of course, you know what you see on the screen are uh, these are the these are the, uh, this is the counseling staff here at Fairfield Prep School and College. So again, you know my role is dean of school and college counseling, and I work with sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Amy, who I introduced in just a few minutes ago, works with freshmen, uh, A to G, and sophomores, and she will travel with your sons through all of their years in that same alphabetic group. So your sons will have the same school counselor for all four years. Lynn Chesbro and Dean Davis, the same. Uh, the alphabetic breakdown is there. They will travel with your sons in that alphabetic group for all of their four years. So the same school counselor for all four years. Laura Silence does, works on both sides, both school and college, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. Peter, uh, give a wave. 
okay? <laughs> Peter, Rick, and, and myself work with sophomores, juniors, and seniors on the college side. So after freshman year, your son will pick up a second counselor, so to speak. So a school counselor for freshman year, school and college for sophomore, junior, and senior year. The college counselor who your son will be assigned to will, will be with him for the next three years. And we're working in teams. So for example, Peter's working with Amy, uh, Lynn and Rick are working together, and Dean Davis and I are working together. So we'll share those students. And we'll, we, we're certainly building a, a program of collaboration between us so that we can get to know our students well, both on the school and college side. So that's really the new rollout. Um, we we'll have a few words to say as well about uh, Robin Bellotta, our social worker, and Jennifer DeLillo, our director of academic support as well, along the way. So these are the, these are the people who you'll be hearing from at different stages over the next four years. Some opening thoughts, um, sort of a context setter. You know, what a difference a year makes. You know, I said this last year, said it the year before, what a difference a year makes. And, and Tim spoke a little bit about that, how things are changing here in terms of what, what we can do for our students in terms of supporting them on their preps journeys. So again, we're referencing the fact that highlights the improvements that we've made in our department. The challenges of welcoming new class of prep have always been and continue to, to guide our planning and our activities and our programming and our growth as a department. Our presentation this evening is meant to inform you of our program and assure you of our support over the next four years for your sons and by extension of you. What we provide in support of your sons may, may be more important now than ever before. Okay, again, uh, and in response, as I said before, the college counseling and advising staff, the school counseling staff have never been stronger. We've grown over the past two years. We've added two additional counselors, a full-time social worker, a full-time director of academic support, a learning specialist, and of course, a, an assistant dean of students for each class. And we met some odd then she'll be traveling with your sons for the next four years. So really, this night is to, to let you know that we're on the job, anticipating and adjusting our program to the needs of your sons for these next four years. So as your sons begin their four-year experience at prep, we begin with them a four-year program meant to encourage and support them as they develop and experience all that Fairfield Prep has to offer them. Our program provides for their academic, personal, and social development, always with an eye on their overall well-being. In their Fairfield Prep years, your sons will experience a number and variety of challenges. Think opportunities when you hear the word challenges. I'm certain that they've experienced some of these already. The four years ahead will be marked by turning points, personal and academic growth invitations and opportunities, all of which will call on your sons to broaden themselves, moving them to discover and refine their talents and their interests, and by doing so, defining themselves. Needless to say, the four years will be a time of significant life development. Know that we're aware and well equipped to walk with your sons as they journey, and so tonight we're gonna offer specifics regarding our roles as counselors and details about how our program will accompany your sons at all levels of their development, from the foundational freshman year through their graduation. Your sons are in the process of becoming young men open to growth, actively exploring interests and talents. In that context, it is our role to encourage and support and to help them find meaning and direction through that growth and support in their progress. Clearly, exploring, becoming, and defining are both exciting and challenging, and we're aware of all of this and of the demands that motivated young men at Fairfield Prep face every year, and we're prepared to assist them in maintaining balance as they balance in direction as they face those challenges. We know the expectations that accompany each level of study and each stage of growth in the years ahead and the variety of opportunities that face your sons, that await your sons. To put it simply, we as counselors will stand at the intersections of your son's development, assisting them in their readiness for each new set of challenges. We want them to see us as a support base, a resource, assisting them in anticipating, planning, and adjusting. Our goal is to provide for them a safe space and, a count and the counsel to adjust and express and exercise their ambitions and their concerns. So as our four-year program travels with your sons, you will see how it aligns and supports Fairfield Prep's mission, which provides an excellent look at our goals for your sons, the, 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 the grad at grad. They become open to growth, intellectually competent, religious loving, and committed to justice. You'll also see how it speaks to the call that all of us at PrEP have received this year, every adult and every student on campus, that is to live for others. You've heard that before, you'll hear it again. In our work as counselors, we communicate with students and teachers, and certainly with you as parents, to monitor our, their academic progress. In our, inter, in, 
Inter interaction with parents were readily available by email and phone, so do not hesitate to reach out. We ask that you always, and really Tim D spoke to this as well already, inform us of what you feel that we need to know that we might not know from your sons. That's our confidential communication. Know that what you communicate with us to us stays in the office unless we agree with you that the teachers need to know about it. That's important as well. We'll reach out to you as we feel necessary. We also want you to know that although we see students, and you'll hear a little bit more about this in a few minutes, we see them once a cycle in group and we meet with them individually as we can, as, as, as they're available as well. Our contacts with teachers are pretty much every day, and teachers see your sons every day. So those are things that are important to us as well. As it should be, the main focus of our evening is on the freshman experience. And before we, we do that, just want to share with you a slide that kind of represents, you know, this was shared actually with parents at an open house recently, and we just felt this was something that we would share with you. It's a little bit of a, a 360 support situation here. And you know, when I look at this slide, I wonder, where does the support that Fairfield Prep, not just the counseling office, where does it begin? You know, it, it begins everywhere, everywhere your sons are. They're athletes, it's coaches, in the counseling office. Again, it's, if it's academic support with Jen DeLillo, if it's working with a learning specialist, the, the support begins everywhere. And where does it end? Well, it doesn't. Right? So the cycle, the cycle moves. And so one of the things that we're responsible for is, in a sense, is directing traffic. So again, you know, I, I don't want to you know, move into the area that, that Lynn and, and Amy and Dean will talk about, but really, we're, we're here to steer just a bit and make sure, so we might be that first point of contact, and then we steer them to those other areas of support. So I think that you know, one of the things that this slide also represents is that we as Fair, at Fairfield Prep, we live the call for others. So again, the slide speaks to our call, not just as a counseling department, but as a school. The other thing that I think is very important to mention is, is how connected we are with every other agency. So our connections are with campus ministry and Christian service and coaches, athletic department. So counselors are very much in the pivot here. I'm going to turn it over right now to, to Dean to talk a little bit about the freshman counseling program, and that's really the focus of our evening. Uh, you know, just to, to reiterate, this is being recorded, and it will be sent out. So again, you'll, you'll see it again, if, should you wish, <laughs> as well. The PowerPoint will be sent out to you, and uh, we'll be happy to take any questions you have at the end of the evening. So Dean Davis. John kind of stole all my thunder there, uh, speaking about <laughs> the point of contact and essentially all that we do. Uh, but this slide essentially talks about what we are as counselors. Um, the previous slide, John mentioned essentially, if I could go back. Great. I feel to a great extent that uh, we should be in the middle of that slide. We're essentially the, the hub of that wheel. We walk that journey with your sons. We walk that journey with your sons and we'll be doing so for the next four years. Um, the primary point of contact, uh, parents, students, and teachers. Teachers are essentially in classes all day. They have one or two free periods. Uh, and during the course of those free periods, they're prep periods. Uh, they're you know, grading papers. Uh, they don't have any direct contact as far as phones. The primary way of getting in touch with a teacher is by email. But we are here, not necessarily at your beck and call, but we are here essentially by a phone call, by, by a phone call, by an email, by just stopping in, we're here. Uh, they're on a rotating schedule, the teachers are. So their free periods change each day. Your sons are in school all day. They have classes all day. If they're taking an innovation, period, innovation class, they have no free periods this current semester. So the time that we spend with them essentially is how we transition uh, them from being incoming freshmen to hopefully sophomores, juniors, and seniors. We're the liaisons, as they mentioned, between becoming the middle school students, going from a middle school student to a high school student, and moving forward. Today was quite a day. I basically went through the entire spectrum of students who find their grades, saw their grades, worried about their grades, um, individuals who wanted to transfer because they're so worried, uh, parents who are concerned about how their sons are transitioning into school. We have a total of 208 freshmen in this class from 55 different middle schools. 
It's all talking about how can we adjust to this new environment. And that's what we're here for, to help walk with them through that journey. We loop in all the faculty advisors if necessary. We work in tandem with the social workers, with the social worker, Mrs. DeLillo, um, who's also actually a social worker, is Mrs. Robin Bellotto. Uh, the director of academic support is Mrs. DeLillo. She works as Mrs. McCubbin, who's also our, who's not up here at this point, but she's our learning specialist. The assistance deans, the director of diversity, campus ministry, and administrators. As a parent myself of two students here, I am excited to work with your, your, your income and your class, your son. I'm a little nervous right now because it's been quite a journey over the course of the last 30 days. I have seen students excel. I have soon seen students crying. I have seen students happy. I have seen students want to transfer because their parents sent them here and they didn't want to be here because they're no girls. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk this and I look at this as we're here to help form these young men. We're here to help them to find their voices. We're here to help them grow. And we have individuals here who are, some of them are the only one from their middle schools here. Only one from their towns. The town of Fairfield basically has about one third of the population of the freshman class, 77 students. But the majority of students are not from Fairfield. So how do they transition? How do they adjust? It is supposed to be bumpy. It is not supposed to be smooth. They're supposed to get some lumps so they can learn how to deal with these things. That's what we do. We, we walk them through those lumps. So they'll know that it is not going to be easy all the time. Life is not going to be easy. But that's OK. This is a place where they can fall. This is a place where they learn to get up. This is what we do. So I look forward to continuing to work with your students in that respect. Parents, we are with your sons for eight hours, essentially every day. If they're on the football team, as one third of the population is, uh, they're here until 6 o'clock every day. Um, it's a tremendous amount of time to be away from your sons. A tremendous amount of time. What you see at home, what we see here, what we do here, we're hoping to form a network of support uh, for your sons. So we welcome that communication from you. We want that communication from you. We want to know when things are hard because when they come here, they're trying to, to blend in. They're trying to, to get to know and make friends. We don't hear sometimes about how tough it is. We don't hear sometimes about how tough that teacher is, that class is, studying. They're coming from 55 different middle schools. And when I say that, I speak to that in the sense that they're coming from some schools didn't give homework <laughs> because they didn't think it was necessary. And suddenly they're thrust into a prep and they're required to do two hours of homework on top of three hours of football. It's a lot. It's a lot. And we're asking this of 14-year-olds. We're hoping that they get to the point, but they take, they've got to take baby steps. We've got to build to that point. So yeah, we're here to walk with them and teach them as they go along this path. Individual council meetings. Now, these are, we'd like these to be initiated primarily by the students because, again, we're trying to get them to the point where they can use their voices. But we want parents to tell us about things that are happening at home that could impact how they're performing here at school and vice versa. We want to know that, oh, they were happy for the first month, and then all of a sudden they're not. What's going on? We want to hear about the things that they're doing at home as far as not studying, why their grades are where they are. We can speak to the fact of what kind of resources we have here to offer them. But we want them to get to their voices. We want to hear them. And again, most 14-year-olds don't have that yet. They don't. But with time, they will. With time, they will. 
the meetings that we have generally, um, we initially have a check-in meetings uh, just to see how you're doing, how classes are going. We obviously are reviewing their grades, uh, reviewing what courses they're involved in, what what academic um, extracurricular activities are going to be involved in afterwards. Um, we want to get them to the point where they can start planning. If you're involved in a sport, especially in the springtime, it takes up so much of your time that you don't get a chance to do any of the activities after school. Football takes up so much time with one third of the population. We have soccer going on, golf. There's a whole host of things and a lot of students get involved in sports. But to really be develop and get to know who you are, uh, you need to explore other things. You gotta be open to growth. So one of the things that we're gonna keep pressing is, okay, when you're off season, what else is going on? What else is available to you next year? What else can you do to explore your interests? We don't know. As a freshman or incoming student, you may have never had rugby. You may have never had crew. So you don't know if you like it or not. You don't know if you have an aptitude for it or not. So that's one of the things that we're gonna be working with and we're gonna keep working with. So we stress with them, please, set a meeting with us. If not, we're gonna come find you. <laughs> not everyone is gonna advocate for themselves and step up. So. Yeah, sometimes we gotta pull them along until they get there. But we encourage you to help us in that uh, journey. It is a long one. We are a college prep school. It is not just for the next four years, it's for the next eight years plus of education that we're trying to prepare them for. So we invite you to uh, walk with us as we walk with your sons. And I look forward to doing so for the upcoming uh, three or four years. Thank you. At this point, I'll turn this over to Amy. All right, let's see if I can get this moving. Um, so next, um, I'm Mrs. Stern, Amy Stern, working with the freshmen and also sophomores this year. And um, it's really been great to get to know the guys so far. Like Mr. D mentioned, it was really wonderful to see them with the younger kids that came up for their day of service. Um, so far, the vibes in the seminar, on the seminar days, that's when we're in the classroom then with smaller groups. Um, the vibes have been good. I don't know if the boys are using the word vibes anymore. I still am. But the vibes with the class of 27 have really been so great, and we enjoy getting to know them, both in the individual meetings that Dean just referenced that are, on, that are up and running. Um, but the classroom gives us a chance to be in front of the guys once a cycle, and I've said this to the other counselors 50 plus times, they're like, we know, but I really love the seminar days. We enjoy the days where we get to be in the classroom with the guys and just see them in a different setting, in a group setting, and build that relationship. Um, so I can't emphasize enough that we are here for your boys, we're here for you. You're hearing this already several times. Um, so for counseling seminar, we're, um, we take half of the theology class on the block days. Um, and there's just a lot going on, as you know, in any, just in one day with their classes, their personal lives, their social lives, um, extracurricular activities. The counseling seminar then gives us a chance to meet with the groups to talk about some of these really important topics. I'll have those listed up here. Actually, I'll put those up now. So some of, here's some of the topics that we cover with the boys this year. And it goes beyond this. It's also sometimes a really nice chance for the boys to ask questions about anything and everything that's going on in the school, in their personal lives. Um, you know, What do we wear to the freshman mixer, for example? So anything and everything comes up when we're in the classroom with the guys. But of course, we have our specific topics. Um, so one of our first topics this year was breaking down and starting to talk about who is this class of 2027. Um, as Dean mentioned, this is 50 plus middle schools they're coming from. Um, and really simply put, it can just feel like a lot to get used to, lots of guys, new classes. Um, so this gives us a chance to see how they're feeling, you know, see how it's going, see what questions they have as they transition and to get to know one another and just understand, you know, how many schools are you coming from? Was it private schools, public schools? To just get an understanding of who they are. Um, we also, every class, take a, some time to just talk about upcoming events. They get so many emails. We know you guys do as well. So this gives us a chance to just talk about really like before we're gonna see them the next time for the next cycle. So sometimes it's like a week and a half or two weeks what's coming up, 
Um, it gives them a chance also to interact with each other. We always have a fun question of the day and once in a while, um, Mrs. Chesbro and I last year would find that if we had a lot to cover in a seminar and we were like, oh, do we have time for question of the day? The boys would say, what about the question of the day? Um, they just loved just that lightness to just talk about something fun and it also taught us a lot about the guys as they would chat about fun little topics. Um, so it's just a, the seminar is an important, important layer of being here for the boys and then it also a nice chance to build off of seeing them more in the classroom when we have our one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one meetings. And I usually find it goes both ways. When I see them one-on-one, -on -one, um, there's this familiarity thanks to being in the classroom. And then also in the classroom, it's just a nice familiarity if we've had our check-in meetings at that point. So it just gives us a really good chance to connect with them. Um, like I said, there's a list of topics. I'm not going to go through all of them. I do want to highlight a couple more. Um, we will, in the first semester, discuss with the boys our safe school climate plan. So what a safe school climate means when we say that here at PrEP is that it's a place where we really emphasize being here for others. And as a counseling department, we emphasize that we're here for them just as you are. So we want you to know that this topic is an important one um, for parents as well to hear. And we want the boys to know to we want the boys to know that we mean it when we say this is really a brotherhood. And so what that means is we want them to be a force for good everywhere they go and of course not bring others down. So when we talk about safe school climate with the boys, it's an emphasis that the boys should feel safe, uh, they should feel respected and supported when they're in school, at a game, or even interacting on social media. And so like um, John Hanrahan already said, it's a 360 approach, right? The teachers, the counselors, the students, the parents uh, would let us know or administration know if there's ever a situation where a student is feeling unsafe. So um, you can also see our safe school plan on our website so you have an awareness, but we're truly, you, us here at PrEP, we're all involved in the support of our students' well-being and comfort. And same thing with the students. There's a responsibility on them to ensure that others are helping others to feel safe. Um, and then lastly, it's timely. I'll highlight our next topic for our next cycle when we see the guys on block days. It will be focusing on academics. Um, so each seminar, we're getting more and more questions about you know really great questions that they have about GPA and how much is quarter one going to weigh way into our grade at the end of the year. So they're being really thoughtful about their grades, which is good for you to know. Um, so we'll expand the topic then to just talk about you know the percentages for GPA, the breakdown. Um, We'll also talk an overview how honors course placements and course selections will work in the spring. The counselors work closely with the boys and with parents if there are questions about courses next year. And sometimes it's beyond sophomore year and mapping that out and understanding where their math class will take them to by senior year. Again, this is sometimes a good question and time to loop in our college counselors as well who we work closely with. Um, while the goal of our next topic of academics is to just explain like the information that goes into their GPA and you know figuring out their grades for freshman year. We know sometimes they feel a little stressed when quarter grades are coming to a close. So we're sure to also remind them of the resources that we have here in the building. And like we're hearing you know and talking about tonight, we have so many layers of support with Jen DeLillo in the Academic Center. We have Fairfield U interns. Um, we have a math tutor, so the counselors are a great stop for the boys if they're wanting to really get more involved with some academic support should they need that. But also, we're always here to remind them they're doing a great job. There's a long way to go. We say it's a long game. You know, it's quarter one. If you're wondering the percentages, that's 21% of their overall grade. So. I do like to tell them, you have 79% of the year to go, especially for our guys who are liking the math breakdown. So they're just getting started, they're really doing a great job, and um, that's just a little bit of an overview of what we're up to when we're in the classroom on the seminar days. So next I'll pass it to Lynn Chesbro. Sorry, good evening. 
Lynn Chesfro. I work with freshmen whose last names begin with O through Z, um, as well as a group of sophomores, and I will stay with the, that group for their four years here at PrEP. Um, during our counseling seminars just this week, we polled the freshmen, um, instead of a question of the day that they all answer in class like we usually do, we had them fill out a Google form and respond to the two questions that you see up on the slide. Um, what do you want freshmen, sorry, what do you want parents to know about being a freshman at prep? And what do freshmen need from their parents? And we let them know that we would be sharing some of their responses anonymously with parents at this evening's presentation. Um, as Amy, Dean, and I reviewed the responses, we were blown away by how thoughtful they were. We appreciated their candor in their responses. Um, they were so endearing. I really would like to compile all of the responses and share them with parents in some way. Maybe we'll put it in prep in a minute because I really think it's so powerful to hear from the boys directly. They're not coming home and telling you how they feel. They might be grunting instead and just, you know, going off to their room more often than not. But there's a lot that they're feeling about this transition from middle school to high school and as they adjust to prep. And so to see it in their own words um, was really powerful powerful for us as counselors to see. We shared it with our social worker as well, um, and I think for parents to, to see as well. So in response to the first question, I, you know, we have several quotes up here, or se several responses up here. Each one was kind of chosen for a different reason. You can read through them um, as I kind of summarize. But in response to what do you want parents to know about being a freshman at PrEP, the overwhelming majority of the boys talked about the fact that it's hard. It is hard to adjust to being in high school. High school is a lot harder than middle school was. Adjusting to prep brings with it a lot of new things that were very different than the schools that the boys are, are coming from or were coming from. And so again, the overwhelming majority spoke to how challenging the adjustment is. It's harder than middle school was. The adjustment has been harder than they expected it to be in some respects. Um, they also spoke to the fact that they're working really hard. They wanted parents to know that they're working really hard at making the adjustment and getting used to being at prep. Um, as you can see from some of the responses, you know, some of them you know, are speaking very highly about the adjustment to high school. I love the response that for the first time, one of our students who, who spoke specifically to this is enjoying coming to school, that he's excited to come to school for the first time. Um, and I love that next quote, too, that speaks to the fact that everyone's looking out for one another, right? That brotherhood, and another quote, the brotherhood is awesome. The brotherhood is a very real thing here, and it's really great for the freshmen to start to experience it. They hear a lot about it as they're incoming freshmen and as they're adjusting to being here, but to really experience it for the first time um, at whatever point during their, their freshman year they experience it is really powerful. Um, the, the last quote on the slide really made me laugh. The, the fact that prep is an all-boys school obviously is a big adjustment for a lot of the boys, and it is something that we talk about in the class. As we talk about the transition to prep, we do talk openly about all the ways that being in an all-boys school is maybe a, a positive thing that they hadn't thought about before because coming into prep, it's usually not necessarily one of the things they're most excited about. But it's great to see how quickly they start to really appreciate just being able to be a guy with their guy friends and, and just the way that the, the teachers are interacting with them because it is more of a homogeneous group. Um, but I loved that, that it, it has its pros and its guns. <laughs> Made me laugh. Um, in response to the question, what do freshmen need from their parents this year? Um, again, the overwhelming majority of the responses talked about love support, understanding, and patience. They told us already that high school's hard, they're working really hard at making the adjustment, um, and that they need some space, they need some room to kind of figure things out, and along that way, there are gonna be bumps in the road. As Dean had mentioned, they are gonna fall, and there's a lot of um, growth that happens when they have to pick themselves up 
when they when they fall. So what they really need from parents, what they're telling us they, they need from their parents is just that space to figure it out and for parents to be there for them when they, when they are working on picking themselves back up. Um, the second quote down that speaks about kind of not hounding them about grades and allowing them to work it out with their teachers is a really great point. That's why I wanted to include that one. It really is so important that the boys are starting to take ownership and responsibility for their academics and that they're having the conversation with teachers. They're getting the habit of self-advocating and reaching out to teachers when, when need be. Um, I, sleep was mentioned a few times. I think it was mentioned one of the quotes on the other side, too. So, yes, I think they all need to go to bed earlier and get some sleep. And it's great that they're recognizing that. Sleep is something that we talk to them about, too. Um, the quote right above that, actually, I just have to read in its entirety because you might have missed it. What I really need is just help with little things, like helping me get my stuff in the morning when I'm busy, getting rides. Rides came up a lot. And little things like coming home to see a treat in the kitchen. That one, oh my gosh, I love that. They just want a, a, a little snack, a little treat in the kitchen. It's a little things. It really doesn't take much for a lot of the boys. And then the last one, money on the pack card and love and support. That kind of summed up really the entirety of the responses. They were all about love and support, wanting parents to back off on grades, and money on the pack card. Lunch is expensive. It just is. And they're all hungry. They mentioned that they are hungry, so they, they need more money on their pack cards. Um, so, you know, again, I think freshmen are recognizing that they need to take more ownership. They're wanting to take more ownership. They really do want to know that they can do it without help. Um, and yet, if they are stumbling and if they are not turning things around like we all would want them to when they stumble, absolutely reach out. Freshman parents absolutely need to be in touch with teachers. They need to be in touch with counselors as need be. We welcome those interactions. We want to hear from you. It's so helpful to hear what's happening at home. So please feel free to reach out. We are all um, here for you as much as we are here for your sons. And we look forward to working with you this year. I'm going to bring John Hanrahan up to speak a little bit about the support available through our academic center and with our social worker. So if you want to hear what kinds of things your sons are hearing, um, find a, the recording of Vin O'Hara's talk to your sons at the freshman retreat. I, we all, at some, I think, heard that. It's on Facebook. Uh, and by the way, I'm not much on Facebook, so, but I know it's there. And, and, uh, but I was, I was there to hear it live. And so, in fact, Lynn's comment or the, one of your son's comments about for the first time I'm really excited and happy to go to school, that was Vin's. You know, although he didn't respond to that survey, he's a teacher here now, Vin O'Hara, uh, so, and, and hockey coach. So he said that, but the other things he said were amazing. And sometimes I think it's really important, all the time I think it's important that you hear what your sons are hearing. Uh, and, um, you know, Tim D spoke about this already, the freshman retreat was rather amazing. So, you know, uh, again, Jen was unable to be here, and I'm going to speak briefly for Jen and Robin. Her slide is next. So, you know, really Jen is in her... her, her uh, second year here all of a sudden can you believe it I mean honestly it seems like she's been here forever that's why I kind of said that um, she's an amazing uh, support base uh, and her staff has grown which is really amazing as well so just a, a couple of things here I'm not going to read the whole slide but there's some some key words on this that I think are important to, 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 to uh, point out again it, the space is for quiet study and she's really done a really good job about keeping it quiet there it's a great place to go and you know students can be there anytime from 8 to 4 o'clock so she's done a good job there. Coordinates and reviews all learning accommodations. So if there are any accommodations issues, that really goes to Jen, and she's an expert at that, at devising plans, communicating those plans to teachers. That really is her role, and she's done a wonderful job at that. Providing in opportunities for individual and small group instruction for students with diverse learning needs. People learn differently. They study differently. Study techniques are different one to another. She's, she forms those small groups with the help of interns and other people who are at her disposal. Collaborates with members of the faculty to understand curriculum, sitting in on classes, talking with department chairs, getting familiar with the, the demands of each of your son's classes in each of the academic disciplines so that she can meet them where they are when they come in for help. Promotes pr provided academic support to uh, services to students, families, faculty, and staff. Again, making available those things that she has available for them, small group work, things like that. So in fact, you know, they've, they've instituted Monday study, uh, Monday afternoon study, study times in the center with resources available, 
She has at her, uh, her disposal Fairfield University interns and uh, Fairfield prep students who are National Honor Society members who are also tutor, tutors, they're peer tutors. So again, all that is available. Robin was unable to be here as well, but you know, she's done an amazing job in providing great support for students, faculty, families. Uh, again, uh, the first point, implementation of a brain health boot camp, it's a, it was a rollout. All students experienced it. It was about a 45 minute or so video presentation, and it's really all about awareness. So she's done a wonderful job of building awareness and understanding of brain health, using the word, the phrase brain health versus mental health. So, and, she, and again, she supports that every single week with Wellness Wednesdays, not up here on the slide, but a Wellness Wednesdays is for the entire day on Wednesday, every single week, Robin presents something. So she has done work on mindfulness, sleep, uh, the things that really might be a, an issue, and students are welcome to and free to drop in during free periods. Some teachers are bringing their classes down for a few minutes. They've done, you know, coloring, therapeutic coloring. Uh, again, it's just a place to maybe a little bit of music in the room. It's a timeout, right? It's a timeout, time to de-stress, and a time to really talk a little bit as needed. Um, support of students, parents, and faculty, and staff. Once again, I think we've all grown in our, our ability to meet the needs of students, emotional needs of students because of the work that Robin has done here. Again, assessment when needed. Uh, assist in connecting students with resources. I, I think outside of prep and inside of prep. Robin does a wonderful job of directing traffic. Right? She's put into play a wonderful system of sharing information through Microsoft Teams with counselors and other people who have touch points with students so that we're aware of what's going on in their lives and we can help meet those needs. Empower students to advocate for themselves. You've heard that a couple of times today. Dean Davis spoke of that. You know, all of us really are in the business of uh, helping students to be good self-advocates. And yeah, it doesn't happen necessarily right away, and it happens at different times for different students, but Robin is very good at that. And then again, collaboration with inside and outside supports, certainly an area of expertise for Robin as well. So again, you know, feel free to, to reach out to her. Contact information will be on the final slide tonight. And again, you know, you'll have access to those slides as well. Uh, so again, yeah, you know, important to hear what your sons are hearing, and we're going to continue with that. Um, Laura Silence is going to join us. Thank you, Laura. There we go. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Laura Silence. Um, I'm uh, really happy to be here. I'm a school and college counselor uh, working with sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And I just thought I'd go real quick. How many people remember their school counselor? Like, show of hands, right? Not that many. How many of you think that you didn't have a counselor, you had a guidance counselor, right? So it's different, and it's different here at PrEP. And I was thinking to myself, you guys are all new parents. You as families chose to come to Fairfield PrEP, and I chose as a school counselor to come to Fairfield PrEP, and I thought I'd share with you some of those reasons. A lot of that is just the very fact that we're here tonight Right, talking about how we surround your sons. We surround them with love, support, guidance, direction, questions, we challenge them. Um, one of the reasons is this team of people uh, to have a people that I love coming to work with every day. I do, I love it. I can turn to anybody at any time in my office, in the hallway, and say I have a problem or I need some help and we laugh a lot as well. Um, and we love your sons. Like we, I love working with high school students and I love these boys. Um, and I love the curriculum that we offer here. So you've heard a little bit about the freshman curriculum, like that we have a seminar, that we get to see the boys on a regular basis. Again, I don't remember ever seeing my counselor except for, I mean, I'm old, but except for when maybe I was applying to college, right? I think maybe I got in trouble once and I had to go see the counselor too. But. Um, I don't, we have deeper relationships. We get to see them, we get to know them. I love seeing them in the classroom, seeing how they're interacting with their classmates. It makes a real difference for us to be able to meet them where they're at when they come in and meet with us. They have the freshman seminars. They will continue to have those seminars through their senior year. And they will continue to have individual meetings with their counselors through their senior year. The topics change a little bit and build with the boys, build with what they need so that when they're ready to leave, um, they're a grad at grad. We help support that mission as well. Um, you'll see on the sophomore list that they're, um, 
are some things that are repeated because we all know that sometimes things need to be told to our boys more than once. Um, so we, we cover things, we reflect, we look back on freshman year and say, you know, what are our goals for sophomore year? What would we do different? How do we want to move forward? We talk about wellness. I mean, that's going to be a through line all the way through their time here at prep in every class. Um, and especially through the counseling seminars. We'll touch again on that safe school climate just to say, hey, remember there's this resource here. We all care for each other. We are all here for each other at PrEP. Um, we'll talk about you know, substance abuse, all of that kind of help, addiction. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about that, that, that we know that's going on. Uh, in sophomore year, we'll start to talk a little bit more about the college process. We've got specific counselors that are here that are going to be college counselors to your sons. And we really, I like to... Some boys sophomore year are going to be a little bit more ready for it than others, but we, we introduce the conversation. And we do that through a system called Naviance is what we introduce to the boys. We'll talk, we talk about a little bit freshman year, and we tell them that Naviance is a way for them to start to explore colleges and career. And we introduce them. We get them signed into that. Um, we do some career planning. They will be doing the P, you know, your boys won't be doing the PSAT, but the sophomores, it's just been a little bit of a, a ride with the PSAT. We'll be taking the PSAT, and then junior year, they'll take it again. We'll start talking a little bit about resume building. Why is it important that we get involved? Why are we telling them, oh, you should try a new club, you should try something new? It's so that they can learn about each other, and we try to, you know, after that transition as a freshman is to really now now find yourself as a sophomore. Um, and again, talk about how do we plan our classes for the rest of the time at prep. Moving into um, junior year, uh, we focus on a little bit of the self-care and wellness as well, as always. We're always going to be doing that. But we really start to move more into those college um, conversations. What are we preparing for? What are we looking for? Um, resume building, continuing that repetition of engagement. Why do we engage? It's so that you get to know yourself a little bit better. Um, academic performance, having these kind of realities of, wait, what does it mean when I now that I have a GPA from two years? What does that mean moving forward? We talk a little bit more, more about the application process. We'll deal all with the standardized testing, um, talking about strategy, what schools are taking standardized testing, things that you just don't think about any of that right now. Um, and then a lot about talking about going to college fairs, admissions, towards the end of their junior year, we'll actually get them right into the Common App, which is the way that um, the boys will be, most of the boys, majority of colleges, they'll be applying through the Common App. We get them into an account and we start them filling out the Common App by the end of their junior year and talking about what comes next. What should they be ready for when they get to senior year? Uh, and again, we see them every cycle. So it's fantastic. Again, we have this curriculum that builds upon itself. And then going into senior year, we don't see them quite as much in the classroom, but we'll hopefully see them a lot more in our offices uh, as they apply to college. We'll walk them through that profit pr uh, process. We have summer workshops talking about um, Broadway, about Common App, about college applications, um, about uh, writing uh, seminars as well throughout the summer. We have 100, this year I think we had 170 college reps come to our office upstairs to meet with seniors. There was one day I think we had 18, I think that might have been the record for the day, where seniors can sign up to go and talk to the reps that 90% of the time are the people that will be reading their applications. And it's a really fantastic opportunity and sometimes they're one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, again, that's just for seniors. We help them figure out what schools are they going to be looking at? How do we do the application? What are our strategies? What are our deadlines? Um, and then we will be writing their recommendations, which is, again, fantastic that we get to know them over this long period of time and be submitting their applications. Then we can work them through when they're trying to make decisions. Where am I going? What's the right place for me? Um, and then we'll talk about what comes after. You know, we'll have, there's a, um, a new kind of internship program that's being led through our office. And then taking care of yourself when you leave here, too. What are you taking with you? And I think after those four years of hearing these messages over and over again, they definitely take it with them. Um, the last thing that I want to say before I turn it back to John is that one of the people, you know, I love my whole team and I love working with parents. Um, it's, it's, you are such an important part of that team that makes our job worthwhile. Um, I was talking to somebody today about the college admissions process and I, I said I feel like I actually work more with parents and helping them through the process um, than the boys. Like sometimes the boys are just fine and the parents are not so fine. So um, I love working with all of you. Uh, I used to be, a fr I was a freshman counselor my first year here 
Um, and I, I loved it. It's, you're going to be amazed by the difference between now and June. Um, thank you so much. There we go. So just um, a couple of final points, and then really I would like to bring the freshman counselors up and maybe see what kind of questions you have. And if, you, if there are a few questions, fine, we can answer for the group. And if not, the counselors will be around for a few minutes for you to come up and say hello. Um, so again, I, I love the, uh, the idea of 360 support, and I think that's something that we're definitely wedded to. Um, the slide that we showed earlier on kind of speaks to that a little bit. You know, the goal of the evening really is to roll out the program to let you know what's going to happen over the next four years. Some of this you'll forget. Uh, we get that, but we'll be reminding you. So at the bo be bottom of each of the slides that Laura presented, there's a, a little note there about a sophomore parent assembly, a junior parent assembly, and a senior parent assembly. Uh, they're strategically placed. Uh, we've already had our senior assembly because they're kind of on their way. <laughs> Freshmen are next and um, juniors in January and sophomores in the spring. We are absolutely here for you. Um, we kind of have that as our, our departmental mantra this year. We're here for you. We roll that out to our students. We roll that out to you and we really are appreciative of you being here tonight. Those who are watching us from home <laughs> and those who are here. So uh, what questions do you have about the freshman counseling program that we can help you with this evening? The question, yeah, the, if the student doesn't make an, a, an appointment, what was the second? Yes, so like Dean said, so we will find the boys. Um, so we're already both scheduling appointments with them and they've started to schedule with us. Sometimes they're also, I'm just getting, I love that they're getting familiar with us. We'll get emails like, I lost my pack card, where do I go? These are the best things that they're already figuring out. Our counsel, The counselors can point them in the direction they need to go. So when we're in seminar, it's a chance for us to remind them because we see them once a cycle, schedule with your counselors. Freshman year, we will schedule with them as well. So they'll get an email from us that will also go into their calendar and they get a reminder. So they certainly are aware of the meetings if they're checking their emails. If they're not, then informally in seminar, I'm also like, hey, you know, I sent you an email and I'm very like friendly about it because so many of the guys are missing meetings freshman year. It's just the way it goes till they kind of get used to it. Um, and so we just give them little reminders because we see them regularly also in the hallways. A lot of times if I know I'm, since we're getting to know them and we see them, we get to know their names and faces sooner. So I'll even say, oh, hey, I'm gonna see you in a little bit. And they're like, oh yeah. Like so we, we get chances to give them reminders via email in person in class and we'll schedule with them as well. We know that all the boys are not gonna go on and click on our Calendly link. So we'll catch them, we'll find them. Any other questions? And additionally, if you do have, if your son has an innovation course during the course of the first semester, they don't have any free periods. Um, they have lunch, but it's, it's quick. I mean, it's a, it's a packed lunch room, so we want them to go have lunch. Um, the times to schedule with us would be like 8.15 in the morning or after school, but again, if you have a sport, it's tough to do that after school. So we're probably gonna tend to be more aggressive with the students who have a free period in the first market period, in the first half of the year. Uh, and then when they get the free period next uh, semester, we'll be going after those ones who have not scheduled with us as well. Other questions? Other questions? Yeah. How many students are on the counselor's seminar classes? Is it one third of the class? So you have to think 70 some odd students So we go into the theology classes, and they are generally, on average, I'd say about 21 students. So we, as Amy had mentioned, we go in during the second, typically the second half of their theology on the block day, which is a 75-minute class. So we have about 35 minutes with the boys um, once a cycle. So yeah, again, about an average, I would say an average of 20 to 21 students per class, which is nice. It allows us to, like with the question of the day, hear from each one of them. That's sort of why we started implementing the question of the day, so that that could just be a chance for every one of them to share. Um, it's a great way to just get to know a little bit about their personalities and hear from them. Um, we usually answer the question too, so they get to know us a little bit, um, and then they can choose to get however involved in the 
actual topic for the day, that discussion, or not. Some of them might prefer to just sit back and listen to what their classmates have to say and what we have to say about a topic. Um, but it's a, it's a great, it's a nice, it's a small enough group being a classroom setting where we can hear from each of them um, and really get to know them. Once again, thanks for being here. Uh, we say to the boys, we're, we're here for you, and we say the same thing to you. We're here for you. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you.